Hi everyone! Today I want to share just a fun little Z Fold card with the Translucent Florals stamp set. This is a card that I made um, for Stamp Camp and I thought it was really pretty and I thought I would share it. Now this paper I, I want to point out because this is not in a catalog. The stamp set and dies are in a catalog but this paper is one of those online exclusives which means you can only find it if you log into the um, store online. So it's just this gorgeous paper and I wanted to share it because you might miss it. One side is patterned and then the back side is a watercolor wash in beautiful colors and this is going to be great with the dies. It's all made to specifically coordinate and um, these stamps and dies kind of do fun things. So the outline dies of course cut out the stamped images move my light a little bit and then the larger dies here that kind of are solid those cut out um, you can cut out pieces of cardstock vellum patterned paper and make beautiful flowers and layering these pieces together to make them and that is what is intended for these really pretty watercolor backgrounds so if you cut out petals and layer your cutouts you're gonna get some really gorgeous looking flowers. So I want to show you this paper. So we've got this big pattern here with berry burst on the back. And then this is a, a floral, I mean a, leaves. And on the back you've got pretty peacock, which I love. Okay, this is a different leaf pattern. Um, the colors on here are parakeet party and pretty peacock. A little bit of yellow in there. Okay, this is that same pattern. On the back of this one, it looks white, but it's not. It's just a very, very pale wash. So, okay. And then you've got giant flowers. Gorgeous. And then this back here is more of a, a fresh freesia. And then um, here we've got that pale one again. Smaller floral. And on the back of that one is the Parakeet Party. And there's one more small floral, which I've used most of. It's a tinier floral. And on the back is Calypso Coral. So you can see you've got a lot of beautiful patterns on one side and just beautiful washes on the other. And I really like them. And, and because there's different like lights and darks in here, it's gonna make beautiful petals, real natural looking flower petals and so pretty. So anyway, this is the die set. This is the stamp set. You've got uh, some great sentiments here. So anyway, this is what we call, um, oh, what is it called? <laughs> it's popping right out of my head. Um, distinctive stamps. And so it looks confusing. When, in fact, when I showed the um, card that we're going to make at card stamp camp, People thought they were going to have to layer stamps, but it does it all for you. It looks like multiple layers are going on here, but that's one stamp already layered for you to give you these beautiful translucent petals. So that was what everybody thought was so amazing. They were worried that they were going to have to layer themselves. And back in the back in the day, we used to have to do it ourselves, but they've come up with this way to carve the rubber in such a way to get lots of tones and shadows and highlights and lowlights by instead of having a solid cutout or a solid rubber they have little it's made up of tiny dots so let me see if I can I don't know if you can see it um, on the video but the stamp the solid image is not solid it's teeny tiny little dots and they get closer together and farther apart and then the outline is a solid um, line and so that's what gives you those patterns, those dark areas where the dots are closer together, farther apart kind of a thing. So anyway, that is how this is made and it looks really beautiful. And I'm going to show you a couple cards. This is one uh, with using those petals again. And here the petals were just colored. This is vellum. And, um, and again, I'm not sure how much you're going to see on video, but the petals themselves are very translucent. You can see the leaves in the background and the layering because it's vellum. And then we just colored the vellum with Stampin' Blends. Okay, and then uh, here's another one where you've got this large 
leaf image and what we did was we stamped two of them and layered them so here is that and doesn't that look pretty how those leaves just layer on top of one another really fun and then we used the leaf cut out like to make a mask and this is embossing paste that's really fun and this wasn't turned before it there we go it was like that okay and then I have another project and I can't find it but here is another one where you've got these just beautiful flowers they're just so pretty and you can do the inside as well just love that such a soft look okay and then what we're gonna make together uses this paper and we're gonna make this Z fold and so I'm gonna show you how to do that okay so we're starting with a piece of berry burst cardstock and I have cut it at the four and a quarter cut the cardstock in half at the four in the corner often I cut it this way but this time I cut it long ways and then I scored it at the five and a half and then again one of these little areas at two and three quarters and that makes this like Z pattern so it opens like that that's berry burst so you've got two scores two and three quarters and five and a half Okay, and then I've got some layering pieces. This is shaded spruce. Now, I think when I was telling you the colors in that paper, I said pretty peacock. I know I'm pretty sure I did. And that is because that is the color in the paper. However, I was running out of pretty peacock and I had to make enough for 14 people. <laughs> and so I brought in shaded spruce. Now, if you put it up against this one, I have this little scrap of peacock on my desk. It is definitely peacock. However, when you go into some of these other patterns, because of the layering and that parakeet party brings in some yellows and the tiny florals, uh, this one again looks peacock, but some of these others, um, lots of greens are showing up in here. So shaded spruce is just fine. And the paper that we're using is this tiny floral. And because of that yellow in that parakeet party, the shaded spruce looks great. So you can see that it is perfectly fine to use either one of these. Yes, um, peacock, pretty peacock works great, but shaded spruce works great too. So we're using shaded spruce so that I had enough to make cards for 14 people plus my sample and the video card. Okay, so this piece is gonna be a layering piece. So it is cut at four by five and a quarter and it's just gonna go down right there. I'm gonna go ahead and put it down so that I have less pieces floating around on my desk. All right, now I've got another pre piece of shaded spruce that's gonna go right here. And this one is cut at two and a half by four. So I've got five and a quarter by four and two and a half by four. And I have two of those. Okay, now one thing I didn't do on my sample card, what I am gonna do on this one is fill in this area here. So I do need to cut that. All right, so now I've got this patterned paper with this really pretty small floral, and I'm gonna place that down. So this one, so this was um, two and a half by four, so this is two and a quarter by three and three quarters. So I'm kind of going down a quarter of an inch each time. Okay, now I need to cut another panel for this because when I was doing the samples, I wasn't thinking about adding the center panel. See, I'll show you really quickly. It's just blank. But then I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and add it. So I cut extra of this piece and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna grab um, the one leaf pattern that was not so pretty peacock. This one I feel is definitely, I mean, no, this was the, where is that? No, actually this one looks good on shaded spruce too. I really do think that shaded spruce, like this is definitely, pretty peacock but when you add that other leaf this is the one I think works even better with shaded spruce they both do actually I can't decide I'm gonna go with this one all 
only because on the back of this one is this Pretty Peacock, which I love. Pretty Peacock is one of my favorite colors, actually, which is why I'm out of it. Um, and on the back of this one, it's very pale, which is really pretty. I thought that might look good for clouds, like a cloud background. But um, anyway, I'm going to use it for here. So I'm going to cut this one two and a, let's see, what was that, two and a quarter? I'm going to make sure. I forgot what I just said. Yes, that one was two and a quarter. So that means this one has to be two. And what did I say it was? Three and three quarters. So now we're going to be at three and a half. I measured the same one instead of going with, see, look what I did. I was trying to be smaller than this one. All right, start over. I was going smaller than this. I'm trying to match this one. Two and a quarter. Three and three quarters. And you won't see it on the front, but I just thought maybe it'd be fuller on the inside. Okay, so that is my, all my little non-stamped pieces are down, except I cut out this really pretty scalloped rectangle. This is from the scallop, let me show you. Scalloped contours dies. It comes with just different sizes of scalloped rectangles, which I absolutely love. Um, you've got a really fun scallop border too, which is great. And these two um, cut out images from the stamp set that coordinates with this. And I have to say, I use it the majority of the time for these rectangles because they're just so great. Super great. Um, anyway, this is the third largest size. And I cut a piece of um, shaded spruce to kind of go on top of it. And I cut it right so that it covers. I love the stitching. I really do. But I cut it so that it just covers it just because I felt like I had a lot of pattern going on already. So this is two and an eighth by three and three eighths. And that covers, that goes just over, just over that stitching. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna do my stamping. So I have a panel in white that's gonna fit right on here. That's not the right one. Right on here. So this one is one and one and seven eighths by three and three eighths. And that is gonna be right here. And then I've got a piece of and this one is three and three quarters by five. And that's gonna go on the inside. Okay, so let's do our stamping. So this stamp set, like I said, has some really great sentiments. And we're gonna use, I like this, that it kind of has the letters going, the words going down. So I wanted to use that one, that's fun. And I'm gonna stamp my sentiment in shaded spruce. Onto the right side of this rectangle piece. Like so. And then on this one, I want to put just a happy birthday. I think that has put, been put away. Yes, it has. Right in the center. Now for the florals, I am going to do, I kind of was looking at the images here, what colors did I want to use, and I'm loving lately that bubble bath, I'm not sure why, I just think it's so 
fun. And uh, another good choice would have been the freesia or the coral, but I really love that bubble bath. So I'm going to do that on the inside. And I'm just going to put it right there. Okay, then there is a little tiny floral center that I want to add. That's my inside. Let me attach that. Okay. Now I need a scrap piece of basic white. Because we are going to stamp some of the larger flowers. And I want to show you a little issue with the stamp set. Okay, so something I noticed when stamping multiples is that the, where's my flower? The, the, uh, remember how I told you it was made up of a bunch of dots? Sometimes those dots can get clogged and it kind of depends. I have noticed on certain colors of ink and um, you just, you know, they're made of different materials, different color blends, and um, also how juicy your ink pad is. So I stamped this one a few times when making my sample. I was doing multiples, so I stamped once. And see, I've got a lot of those little translucent dots have kind of been filled in, and as you stamp more, it gets even more filled in, the floral I'm talking about, the petals in the area that's supposed to be very transparent. So see, I've got these dots, and that's because I told you it was made up of little dots. They've kind of gotten filled up. So you want to, in between, sometimes we like to not clean our stamps when we're stamping multiple because we think, well, we've got, we want it to be a deep, rich color, so might as well not clean it every single time. But if you do clean it, you're going to get a better result um, because you're not going to get these little clogged areas. So let me see if I can clean it pretty good. I like these because there's little bristles that kind of get into those little dots. So I've got a nice clean stamp and I'm going to try and stamp it again and see if I get a better result. Also, um, you don't want to squish the ink into, you don't want to squish your image down into the pad so much. I can tell that I squished it because I can see the filled in areas. Let's see, yeah. So also my ink pad is new and very juicy. So what we can do, if that's happening to you, you can try to lightly ink and I think I'll get a better result there. Soft, oh, see. By not pressing down as much, I don't have as much of those little um, filled in areas. But another way to do it is to use a sponge dauber. When your ink pad is super juicy and you don't want to get a messy image. how soft that is. So that sponge dauber is going to be your friend. So here I've got a lot of my little holes were clogged up and here they were just super soft. Let's, let's do another one. Isn't that beautiful? Those petals are so pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay.
Oops. All right, I like that one. Now I'm gonna do a couple petals, and this time I'm gonna use Parakeet Party. And again, you can try, and it just depends on, now this ink pad was super juicy yesterday, but I used Parakeet Party a ton yesterday, so I might be able to get a nice stamp image. Again, I'm getting it full, because my pad is very juicy. So let's do that trick with the sponge dauber. So I'm using a different sponge dauber so that I don't get um, pink in my green. Now, I don't have a sponge dauber for every single color. What I do have is a sponge dauber in multiple like, color families. Like I'll use the green dauber um, for a lot of greens. I'll have maybe a couple different greens because some of our greens are very dark, like mossy meadow or shaded spruce. And then we've got some that are very liney, like parakeet party or lemon lime or granny apple. So I've got a few sponge daubers that I use with multiple colors. And for example, the Berry Burst, I'll also use with Melon Mambo. So you don't have to have a ton of sponge. Oh, I went too light. So I am going to cut out my flowers and my leaves and be right back. Okay, now we're going to put it all together. got my sentiment down I'm gonna put the flower on a dimensional to pop it up a little bit and then I'm gonna tuck these leaves kind of behind Now, when you glue this down, you want to only put adhesive on the left side. So I'm going to flip it. And that way, you don't accidentally glue your card completely shut. <laughs> Try to center that. Okay, and then I also wanted to add a little bit of sparkle with some of these iridescent pearl basic jewels. Now, I love that the iridescent really picks up some of that pink. So it's really gonna ni look nice on the berry burst. So I'm gonna put a couple of these. I like to add a few different sizes. Yeah. I think it's a really pretty card. So I hope that you'll try out a Z fold card. And I really love this translucent floral stamp image. It's so great. So try that out. Again, here's a couple others. This is Melon Mambo. I had some red Poppy Parade that looked really great in Poppy Parade and I can't find it. And then here is that leaf. Isn't that gorgeous? This is also shaded spruce. And then the dies. I just used the small flower, but you can this bigger one too. This is this one here, these two. So imagine how much bigger this would be. Gorgeous. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll come back again. Please like and subscribe. Bye.